In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Soshi K asks us, what do cockroaches eat and where do they live? when they're not in our houses. Sneaky and skittering, invasive and indomitable, the disgusting periodomestic cockroach is a formidable enemy for anyone unlucky enough to live among them. Interestingly, however, they are surprisingly delicate, and at least one species is utterly dependent on humans for its survival. Of the 5,000 known species of cockroaches, those that most plague people are the American cockroach and the German cockroach. The American version is the largest cockroach encountered in human constructions, growing to an average length of 1.5 inches, that's 4 centimeters. It is not common in homes in the northern US, preferring a warmer environment, although it will be around, especially in larger, particularly commercial buildings like grocery stores and restaurants. Unlike the German version, the American cockroach will live outdoors in warmer climates, and in places like Florida, they can be found around garbage, in trees, and in woodpiles. During periods of heavy rains, this species is known to mass migrate and overrun a building. The bugs are managed around homes by corking cracks, removing rotting vegetation, and keeping areas around the structure as dry as possible. Indigenous to Africa, the American cockroach was first introduced across the pond in the 17th century and is usually found below ground in drains steam tunnels, sewers, and basements. Prolific, one community of Americana that was discovered in a single sewer manhole consisted of 5,000 members. On average, each female of the species will produce 150 eggs over a 10-month period and will deposit them in clusters inside a hard-shelled case near a food source, sometimes gluing the case to the source with her spit. After hatching, the American cockroach goes through several stages of development, but during each it actively forages for food. Opportunistic, they enjoy whatever is at hand and will eat decaying matter as well as bread and fruit, paper and clothes, hair and even shoes. Because of their proclivity for sewers and human waste, the American cockroach spreads over 22 species of organisms that cause disease in humans, including protozoans, viruses, fungi, and bacteria, as well as several species of parasitic worms. As for Americana's cousin, the German cockroach is the jerk you've probably met at one point or another if you've ever had a cockroach problem in your house. Adults of this species reach an average of 0.5 inches in length, that's about 10 to 15 millimeters. Secretive, the German cockroach spends most of its time about 75% in hiding. This is likely due, at least in part, to the fact that Germanica cannot live without humans and our modern comforts. So if they didn't stay hidden, they'd quickly find themselves squished in most homes. In fact, at least one study has shown that the species will die out in the winter in northern climates in homes that do not have central heating. Inside of a residence, the German cockroach lives in large groups, clustered in dark places, often in the kitchen. Favorite haunts include walls and cabinet voids, as well as under and behind the stove, dishwasher and refrigerator. They find each other by scent, which comes from the poop that they deposit in set areas, called fecal focal points. Like its American counterparts, this species eats pretty much anything it can sink its mandibles into, although they particularly love garbage, sweets, grease, and meat. Females of the Germanica species hold onto their egg cases for far longer than American cockroaches and only drop them within 24 hours of the eggs hatching. Additionally, each case has more eggs, holding anywhere from between 30 and 48 at a time. A single female of the species can produce over 200 eggs within her lifetime, and according to Penn State University's College of Agricultural Sciences, in one year over 10,000 descendants can be produced. As with its cousin, German cockroaches go through many stages of development, although from the time they hatch, appearing in nymph form, they also forage for food. Continuously breeding, any particular community of this species will usually be comprised of only 20% adults and about 80% nymphs. Since Germanica also transports pathogens, things like diarrhea, food poisoning, and dysentery may be transmitted to humans where there is an infestation. In addition, the German cockroach's excrement, as well as its malted skin, have been known to cause allergic reactions in some people, including triggering asthma and the development of skin rashes. German cockroaches are notoriously hard to get rid of due to their secretive nature and prolific fertility. Nonetheless, preventative measures such as maintaining a fastidiously clean home, for example not leaving dirty dishes out overnight, storing food items in bug-proof containers, and emptying garbage cans frequently can greatly help. Common methods of killing the German cockroach include using chemicals as well as shaking poisonous dusts like boric acid into the crevices and spaces where they congregate, although be careful here because these toxic things can also hurt children and pets. Surprisingly, the entomologists at Penn State University say that foggers not only don't work, they may make the problem worse by temporarily dispersing the roaches, only to have them return later. 
And now for a bonus fact. Speaking of annoying insects, ever wonder why gnats seem to swarm in a ball? Well, wonder no more. A common sight in the spring and summer, the seemingly unprofitable and pointless habit of gnats to hover in a cloud is, in fact, the single most productive thing they'll ever do with their short lives. Although there are a wide variety of non-biting but eminently annoying gnats and midges, their life cycles are pretty similar. Each begins as an egg, and with some species, they lay thousands of these at a time. When they hatch, after a period of no more than a week, each enters a larval stage lasting anywhere from 10 days to 7 weeks, followed by a pupae stage that lasts another 3 to 20 days, and then each emerges as an adult. And this is when they swarm. Fulfilling their biological imperative, gnats and midges, like many other insects, swarm in order to reproduce. When the moment is right, females take flight while secreting a sex hormone that attracts the males, who, like those from many species, can catch the scent even from a distance. The males seek out the female, swarming around her, trying to be the guy, and in the process, forming into the well-known ball. Yes, that ball of gnats you accidentally walked through was simply a group of insects just trying to get it on. Shortly after mating and subsequent egg-laying, the lovers die. Experts note that many insect species swarm, including colony living insects, and many believe this is to promote genetic mixing. Members of different colonies are able to time up their swarming by following environmental cues such as temperature, daylight, humidity, and wind speed. High winds can be bad for business. In addition to continuation of the species, scientists have discovered that the the health of many breeds of social insects depends on their proximity to their packs. For example, Mormon crickets rely on their groups for safety, and in a 2005 experiment where some individuals were separated from the group and set loose on their own, within two days, 50-60% to 60 of the loners were dead, compared with zero deaths among those who remained in the pack. Beyond survival, pack proximity also tends to play an important role in the development of some species. Moving back to cockroaches, in a 2012 report, it was revealed that cockroaches, like misery, love company, and when left alone, they can suffer from a variety of maladies, including delays in molting and difficulties when mating. Cockroaches also enjoy communicating with each other, and they sometimes do it, as previously alluded to, with their poo. Exuding chemicals called cuticular hydrocarbons, they often mix these with their feces to leave a scent trail for their compatriots to follow back to a food source. Just think about that the next time you see a cockroach on the kitchen counter. These chemicals also help individuals identify fellow members of their bands so they can distinguish their pack's poopy trails from all of the others. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do check out a new channel I've got going on. It's called Geographics. It's a geography-based channel, obviously, from the name. That is linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.